we are beginning. Hi, science friends. We are starting our new unit. This will be unit five, I believe, on writing chemical equations. So this unit is really going to pull into what we did in the last unit. So you have to be able to name chemical equations um, and write the formulas out in order to be able to write equations and understand equations. So um, hopefully we've mastered that and we are ready to move on to the next step. So, um, when we write chemical equations, sometimes you will see what's referred to as a skeleton equation. And so, these two examples shown here are both skeleton equations. You'll notice that they don't have any numbers here. Um, if you had numbers here, that would be moles, like you would have one um, um, no, uh, not mole, sorry, one molecule of H2O or two molecules of C6H12O6 or three molecules of O2. Um, but in a skeletal equation, you don't have those things. Um, so I'm going to undo those. So a skeleton equation doesn't have any numbers there. It doesn't uh, indicate the amounts of reactants in product. It just shows what reacts in the equation. So carbon dioxide plus water yields um, C6H12O6, which is glucose plus O2. Um, that's the equation for photosynthesis. You may remember um, from last year in environmental science. Um, and then the next one, iron plus oxygen yields iron oxide. That would be iron um, 3 oxide, if we were going to name it. Um, so that's important that we know how to name these in order to be able to write our equations. Um, sometimes you'll see letters down here that would indicate the state. So S is going to be solid, L is going to be liquid, G is gas, and then AQ is an aqueous solution. So that means basically that you have a solid dissolved in a liquid. Um, so it's a solution of something, a solute plus a solvent. Um, makes a solution. So for example, if you dissolve salt, that would be your solute in water. That would be your solvent. Your solution is a salt water um, solution. So sometimes you'll have things that are AQ indicating an aqueous solution. Um, so when we have chemical equations, a couple of other things that you'll sometimes see is you'll sometimes see a catalyst in your chemical equation. So I'm going to write an example here. Hg, um, let me try that again. That's not the right equation. I can't erase easily. H2O2, which is peroxide, with manganese oxide yields H2O plus O2. So peroxide breaks down into water and oxygen when this catalyst is present. So here is our catalyst. So sometimes you'll see a catalyst written above the arrow in a chemical equation. So what is a catalyst? A catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction. It makes it happen faster, okay? Naturally, H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide will break down into H2O and water. It happens naturally. It happens on, your, on its own. If you get a bottle of peroxide at the grocery store, it has an expiration date on it. Um, and what you may notice is sometimes if you let it go past the expiration date and you um, pour it on a cut, it won't do the fizzing and bubbling that it normally does when it cleans out your cut. Um, it'll, it'll just not do anything because all it is, it's water. It's turned into water and oxygen. So that happens naturally, but it takes a really long time for it to happen. Usually peroxide's good for three or four years, maybe even longer. Um, but so it'll happen naturally, but it takes a really long time. But if you put in a catalyst such as manganese oxide, then, and that would be manganese 4 oxide technically, then um, it would happen a lot quicker. And so that's what a catalyst does. It speeds up a chemical reaction and it would be written over top of the arrow. Okay, so in a chemical reaction, these over here are our reactants. Okay. These over here are our products. I think we've talked about this before. And when you do the arrow, the arrow means yields. So H2O, uh, H2O2 yields 
um, water plus oxygen, okay, is how you would write that with manganese oxide, um, four oxide as the catalyst, okay? Now, I forgot to say this at the beginning. Some of you all may not have these notes, um, and if you don't, that's okay. I'll give them to you tomorrow. This is a pretty short lesson, so just follow along and try to pick up the content, and then we can fill in the, fill in the blanks tomorrow when you, I have you in class. Um, so other symbols that you can sometimes see, sometimes you'll see a reversible reaction. And a reversible reaction is indicated with this symbol. So you have a half arrow in one direction over top of a half arrow in the other direction. And that means a, re a reaction re proceeds in both directions. It goes both forward and reverse. So you could flip it around. You could say H2O2 yields um, water plus oxygen or water plus oxygen yields H2O2, if you had that type of arrow there in the middle, okay? And then um, heat is supplied to the reaction. So there's two ways that you can write that. Um, you can write the arrow, and you can put a triangle over it. That triangle is known as a delta. That's a Greek letter. Um, delta is the name of it. Or you can write the arrow, and you can write heat, over it. Both of those would indicate that heat, heat is supplied to the chemical reaction. Okay. So what I want you to do here is write a skeletal equation for the following chemical reaction using the appropriate symbols. Okay. So I'm going to do this one with you and then you'll have plenty to practice. So solid sodium, hydrogen, carbonate, Okay, you may recognize that as sodium bicarbonate, HCO3 is bicarbonate, that's technically the more proper way to, to say that, um, reacts with, so that's going to be our plus sign, hydrochloric acid, so again, you have to know these, okay, and this was solid, so I'm going to put a little S there, reacts with hydrochloric acid, okay, to produce HCl, to produce aqueous sodium chloride, and that's aqueous, water, and carbon dioxide gas. And since that's water, we'll put it as a liquid, okay? And that's how that you would write that, okay? Now, I know that hydrochloric acid is a liquid, so I'm going to put liquid there. If it doesn't say that, I would not expect that from you. Um, but generally, if, if um, they have this state of matter, you will see it on all of the parts of the equation. Okay? So that's how you would write that. So let's try a couple more together. Um, or you can pause these and try them on your own if you want. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and keep working on them. So sulfur, so sulfur is S, burns in oxygen. Now, what do you remember is special about oxygen? You should say that oxygen is a Hofbrinkle, and so there has to be two of them, okay? To form sulfur dioxide. And that's how you would write that one. The next one, heating potassium chlorate. So potassium, uh, and I think that's chlorate ClO3. It might be ClO4. I don't have an island chart right here in front of me. Let's see if I can Google this. Y'all, if I... Chlorate is ClO3. Okay. Um, ClO3. Y'all know that's a 3. Okay. Um, in the presence of the catalyst, so we're heating it and it's got the catalyst, manganese dioxide, okay, produces oxygen gas. It's a gas. And potassium chloride is left as a solid. So that's how we would write that one. That one's a little more difficult, okay? 
heating potassium chlorate in the presence of a catalyst. Now, we have to make sure when we write these that the, equ that the equation or that the formula is balanced. Potassium has a plus one charge, chlorate has a minus one charge. So I didn't have to do anything special to that one, okay? Same over here. Potassium has a plus one, Cl has a minus one. You can't just write them and not think about them. You have to make sure that the charges are balanced. You have to write the correct chemical formula, okay? Um, and then we've got our Hofbrinkle O2, all right? Um, so that's how you would write that equation. Now, for these, it asks us to write a sentence. So I'm going to ask you to be able to do both of these. So for this one, the first one, we would say potassium hydroxide, actually aqueous, Um, combines with sulfuric acid, aqueous, to form liquid water and potassium sulfate aqueous okay so that's how you would write that that one a sentence now your sentence may not read exactly like mine and that's okay okay as long as it has the same meaning so maybe you said um, sulfuric aqueous sulfuric acid is added to potassium hydroxide that's okay. Um, the, the exact wording doesn't have to be the same as long as the meaning of it is the same, okay? Now, let's look at the next one. I've kind of run out of room here to write. So for the next one, I would say solid sodium is combined with liquid water to produce aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Now, I know that doesn't say gas, and so if you just said hydrogen, that would be okay, but I know that that's hydrogen gas, okay? And notice that it's also a Hofbrinkel, so there's two of them, okay? All of those Hofbrinkels are gases, all right? So that's how you would do those, to write a sentence. So, what I want you to do today is you are going to be working on this page. Now, if you have your binder, um, some of you will have this page. Some of you won't have this page. Um, you can wait and work on it tomorrow when you get this page. Or you can, um, if you can print it, it's on Google Classroom. If you can't print it, I'll give you a copy tomorrow, and you can, um, I think most of you should have it, unless you were absent the last day that we were at school. Um, if you can't print it, then you can mark it on paper, or you can wait for it to get it when you see me, okay? But what we're going to do here is we are going to write the formula for each of these compounds, okay? Now, this second part, it says use coefficients to balance each equation, we're going to come back and do that part tomorrow, okay? So for today, I just want you to write the formula for the compound, okay? So I'll do the first one with you. Iron 3 oxide. That's how you would write iron 3 oxide, I think. Sorry. Fe2O3 would be how you would write iron 3 oxide, okay? Um, plus carbon monoxide yields iron plus carbon dioxide, okay? So that's what I want you to do today. 
for all of these. I think there's there's several. There's a front and a back. Okay. Just write out the equation. None of these you have to have um, the uh, the state of matter on them. You don't have to put aqueous or liquid or gas or any of those things on this worksheet. Okay. Simply just write out the formula of the equation. And tomorrow we're going to um, learn how to balance these equations. All right. Let me know if I have any questions and you'll have a great day.